And then, yeah, one night I was after a forced money talk because I'd be like, we need to talk about this. I'm just, you know, not happy. And, and, um, he, I was just really upset. And I just thought, like, is this the person that I want to grow old with? This, I don't want to be with this grumpy old man, you know, um, he used to be so much fun and now he's depressed. He's grumpy. He's angry. He snaps at me and snaps at the kids. Um, his, his whole demeanor was just really like hunched and he used to be so much fun. Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your husband's conscious effort so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today we're unpacking what to do when your kids don't respect you. There was no joy or laughter in my guest Julia's marriage, but there were plenty of arguments. Then she did a bunch of experiments and they worked. Today, she feels a weight has been lifted and her marriage feels intimate and fun. She's going to tell us what she did so you can do it too. But first, let's talk about what to do when your kids don't respect you, which first of all, I don't know anything about. I'm not sure how this topic got approved for the podcast because I don't even have kids to disrespect me. This could be a really short podcast because my imaginary kids that I don't have already respect me so much, except when I want them to do something in a hurry and I yell at them, or when I force them to get dressed when they don't want to get dressed, or if I drop them off at gymnastics camp when they don't want to go to gymnastics camp, but I make them go in crying every day for a week because, uh, hello, I have to do some work. And okay. That wasn't my kids. That was my sister's kids that I was watching one summer. And I'm lucky my niece still talks to me after that gymnastics camp incident. So I know what it's like to be disrespected by exceedingly short people. And it's so frustrating because first of all, some people are so small, I can just pick them up and drop them on the bed while they giggle and relentlessly, like bedtime is some big game instead of the end of my childcare shift that can't come fast enough. And often these kids are not able to pick me up and take me anywhere at all. No, they are weaklings. And in many cases, and I won't name names here, these kids can't even tie their own shoes. So I clearly am in charge of them. I am the boss and everyone knows you have to respect your boss. Everyone but kids, that is. Those slippery kids just do their own thing way past bedtime. It's like they don't even know how to tell time. But food has to be consumed and bodies have to be washed and pajamas have to get on and teeth have to be brushed and stories have to be read and lights have to be turned off. And my experience is that Kids don't seem to respect my authority about these things, nor does nagging, begging, pleading, or even bribing them work very well, although I had limited success with using raisinets to get another niece out of the pool one time. I can't make them obedient, and that can be very stressful, which reminds me of another similar experience I've had. I, I wanted my husband to also follow my orders and do things my way. And when he didn't, I got stressed and frustrated. And I'm not proud to say I yelled at him to assert my authority as the boss, which is ridiculous because he's a full-grown man, actually bigger than I am, who can both tie his own shoes and tell time. I complained that he didn't respect me, but now I can see that I just wanted him to obey me. Just go along with how I say things should be. Just do as I say. That's what I really wanted. But my husband is a sovereign person who has his own thoughts and ideas. And that was part of why I married him. With my previous definition of respect, though, I probably should have just saved us all a lot of time and married myself. It's different with kids, of course. You're responsible for your kids. And like my husband, kids are also sovereign individuals with their own thoughts and desires. That's part of their charm. It's part of their wonder. So it's not always easy to get them to be compliant. 
And even though everyone who's ever been responsible for a child has wished for compliance, including me, especially me, there's something that I wanted even more when it comes to kids that I know and have cared for. It's connection. I want intimacy. I want closeness and emotional safety. I I want to feel like a family. Being on the same team in the quest to get groceries and pick a movie and clear the table. That's what I really want. So it's interesting that the experience I had with kids resisting my authority is so similar to my husband resisting my authority, which I now know was because I was so controlling. And all control comes from fear, from asking if he paid the taxes, like I just did, It's because I'm afraid he didn't. Respect would be expecting the best from him as someone who manages our household finances beautifully. But how do you trust children and how would that make them more respectful anyway? I'm I'm always moved when I hear students describe how they apologize to their child for being disrespectful to their child. Imagine if your mom apologize to you for being disrespectful to you. How great would that feel? So that's one example. If you've never done that, uh, it's not easy to do it first, uh, at least not with a nephew. Anyway, uh, it was easy with my children that I don't have though. That, that was, that was very easy. One of our coaches talked about how before she learned the six intimacy skills, she was mostly mirroring back to her children that they were so cute. Cute, but also so messy. Once she learned the intimacy skills, she decided to use a child-fulfilling prophecy, which is a a variation of a spouse-fulfilling prophecy, which is a gratitude skill. She decided to look for evidence that her children were tidy. And that's not what kids are known for, right? But She found some evidence, which is an important part of practicing this particular skill. Her evidence was that her daughter put away her shoes in the closet where they belonged. So she said, look how you put your shoes in the closet. I'm so happy that I have such tidy children. Thank you for straightening up. Now, she was looking past the toys that were strewn everywhere and the unmade bed and all the other messes that were around to choose her focus wisely on the experience she wanted to have instead of the one she didn't want to have. And her children just beamed when they heard how tidy they were. They started looking for what else they could do to embody her statement that she has tidy children, which was a first. So you can imagine how exciting that is to have your kids be inspired to be tidy because they see how happy it makes mama. I think of respect as meaning you're expecting the best from someone, not the worst. And in this case, those kids saw their mom expecting the best from them. And that shifted the culture at their house. The kids were excited to be thought well of and to be trusted to do something that made their mom happy. It's a big part of growing up, knowing how you can contribute. That mom sure felt good about how she was showing up with so much dignity. And she loved how the kids responded to her when she experimented with using the six intimacy skills. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. There was no joy or laughter in my guest Julia's marriage, but there were plenty of arguments. Then she did a bunch of experiments and they worked. Today, she feels a weight has been lifted and her marriage feels intimate and fun. She's going to tell us what she did so you can do it too. 
Julia, welcome to the Empowered Wife podcast. I'm so excited Thanks, to hear your Lord. story. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here to share my story. Great. Well, let's dig right in. What were things like in the bad old days? Yes, the bad old days. Um, <laughs> I was just really just this controlling wife. Um, I got to the point where um, my husband would smuggle his lunch, his bought lunch and in, into the house if I was home and I would give him the evils. I would be um yeah not wanting to talk to him because he spent some money and um it was just really horrible there was no communication when we talked to each other it was just all business it was um mm. there was no fun social interaction and it just kind of like we grew apart like we were flatmates he would do his thing in his um man cave and I would just be wondering, why is he not coming to join me and the kids? Why why is he just on his phone? Why is he just playing games by himself? Does he not want to be involved in his family? Um, and I, <laughs> there was a lot of moments when I thought, you know, I can't go on like this. We can't go on like this. Um, even my husband told me, we can't go on like this. So I was just... Um, expecting him to come and join, you know, me because I was right and my way was the right way. It was the highway, you know. I, I I have researched this and I knew what to do. And um, but he just wasn't joining me, and it was frustrating. And so yeah, we had all I had all this time where I'm like, oh, this can't go on like this. If only he would just join me. If only he would just do it my way, it'd be so good. And then yeah, one night I was after a forced money talk because I would be like, we need to talk about this. I'm just you know not happy and and um he I was just really upset and I just thought like, is this the person that I want to grow old with? This I don't want to be with this grumpy old man, you know. Um, he used to be so much fun, and now he's depressed. He's grumpy. He's angry. He snaps at me and snaps at the kids. Um, his his whole demeanor was just really like hunched, and he used to be so much fun, you know. But it's not healthy for any of us. So I googled. I went on to Google, and I googled how to deal with a depressed husband because you know of course it was his issue it was nothing to do with me and how do I deal with a depressed husband what are the five things that I can do to deal with a depressed husband <laughs> so uh it, yeah it sounds like it was very it's very lonely and painful and it was it would have been so easy to fix if only he would just do everything your way which yeah. It seems seems very simple and frustrating. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but you, so then you found this, you found this article about how to deal five mm -hmm. things ways. Mm -hmm. to, okay. So then what happened? Mm -hmm. So I opened up the website, which was your website, Laura Doyle. Um, and I started reading the article and I thought, oh, Oh, have I got, is, is it something to do with me? Am I doing something here? Like, because it was so specific and it, I think it even stated that, you know, as the wife or girlfriend in the relationship, you are most likely the issue. And I thought, no, 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 totally not, not my issue. Anyways, I read on and I was just really inspired. And then um, I joined the group after watching one of your um, little masterclass um, um, shows and I was like, right, okay, we're just going to do this. We're going to do this. I'm going to jump right in. I binge watched all of the skill videos. Um, I took notes. I'm a note taker. I took notes and I thought, right, okay, let's, I need to start somewhere. So where I started was 
well, before the one thing that the first thing I practiced was um, respect and gratitude and as much as I could. And it was really strange for me. I felt awkward doing it, but I thought, well, if I am not going to do anything, nothing's going to change. Mm-hmm. So when my husband would go and vent about his job and in the past I would give him helpful tips well, if it was me, I would talk to your boss like this. Or have you tried that? Um, yeah, so I would now, I thought, okay, let's do this. I would say, oh, I hear how frustrating that is, um, that your boss is doing this. I hear how frustrating it is. And he would just go on and on. And I would confirm that I listened. And I would go, but I'm so grateful that you are such a good provider. And I'm so lucky to have such a good husband. And he was like, oh, okay. Oh, thanks. And then it would just dissipate. He would just be like, oh, yeah, okay, this is cool. And then um, also part of it was, yeah, yeah. No, this is incredible. This is incredible. We have to to talk about this for a second, Julia, because, okay, okay, well, well, let me go back for just a second too, because um, I hear what a a contrast that is to how you'd been, you did a great job showing us like the before and after where you'd be making Mm -hmm. these, you would be trying to tell him how he could get out of his fix, out of his problems. And, um, but when you, so you read this article and it said, basically what you took away from it is that the problem is you, he's depressed because of you. Why was that not very highly offensive? Um, I think just deep down, I knew that it was probably me. Um, he 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 said he actually said in the past a lot, you know, like, oh, you know, I I'm, can I just let can you let me be the adult here? Um, so he had given me lots of tips. (laughs) <laughs> hence in the past saying you know I just need to be the adult like stop treating me like a kid um so I think deep down I knew it was me okay. um so that's why it wasn't offensive um okay. I I wanted to change I wanted something to change and if these skills were gonna help me to change my marriage into what I wanted it to be then I needed to set aside my own opinions and my own um, thoughts about how this should be ran, how this marriage should, well, how I came to the party. I needed to set that aside and try something different because how I was doing it was not working. (laughs) Wow. There's so much humility, so much accountability Mm. in that answer. But I just have to ask, I mean, wasn't part of you like, why does it? Why does this all have to fall on me? Why would this be my job? The re- the big thing that I took away, one of the big things that I learned about was, you know, that the husband is the head, but the wife is the neck, and she turns the head. And when I read that, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. And the way I had been. I guess running the relationship by not well thinking that I was the one who was knew it all and I was right. Um but that I, you know, the neck and the head need each other. And to be able to do that in a respectful way where it created the intimacy that I wanted and the fun the skills that I'd been learning I thought well we're going to put this into practice um I don't want to continue on the way I've been doing things um and if it's me that has to change that's fine I will just dive right in wow what's the worst that can happen well I that is so impressive because I I remember thinking (laughs) it was terribly unfair that I had to be the one to change. It doesn't sound like you wasted much time thinking about no. that. You just went right into yeah. like, let's get this all solved then, yeah. uh, which you did. So, okay, so mm-hmm. then you so you uh, were listening. I love this story of you listening to his challenges at work. 
and then um, thanking him for being a great provider. And and fi- and then just the listening, he opened up much more, and you got to hear much more. How was that for yeah. you? Uh, it was great, um, Laura. I just really enjoyed being in the moment, and because I was practicing these skills it just made me a lot more aware because I had to really think about I had to be really present in the moment and practice my skills so I was aware I was just really focusing on listening to him and then making sure that I was you know giving me my best response um which was you know I hear you and then I was like okay I need to follow up with the gratitude So I was just really more present. And then we had a really great conversation um, because I used to say, hey, we need to talk about this, that, whatever, everything. We need to talk about it. And now, you know, um, we were on the weekend, we were just kicking back and um, the conversation was flowing naturally. It wasn't a business meeting, which is what it used to be. It was flowing naturally, and I was able to say, you know, hey, um, I was just thinking. Well, I was, ho- I was wanted to get your opinion about this, and um, we were able to have a conversation. And I could naturally weave in some of the financial stuff I wanted to talk about. And I just said, hey, the way I've been handling things, we've been really disrespectful, and you know, as a the head of the household. You know, I would like to just apologize for all the disrespect I've been, you know, dishing out to you. And um, I said, I am so sorry for giving you the evils and a really hard time about buying sushi. I said, I am so sorry. Who does that? That was so disrespectful. And he was just blown away. He's like, where is this coming from? And I said, oh, you know, I've been reading a book and doing this course. And he's like, oh, wow, okay. And his whole demeanor changed. And the biggest thing the other day for me was we were just sitting down relaxing. And he goes, um, he was actually watching the cricket. So that's, you know, the Cricket World Cup is on at the moment. And he really loves his cricket. And he just said, "Him, you know, sorry, Julia. My mental health is feeling, it's improving a lot. And I was just so blown away. I was like, wow, that was really a big thing for me because as you just heard earlier, I didn't want to grow up with up with this old bitter man. And for him to say that was just really, it just, it just brought so much joy to my heart to hear that. Yeah. And yeah. To, and to just know, I really had to let go of my um, the the feelings that I was holding on to about man. If only I had known about this earlier, if only I knew about this five years ago, ten years ago, how much things would have been different. But I had to let that go because we need to move on. And I thought, well, I'm moving on in the right direction. Let's just keep going. And he has got more of a spring in his step. He is more attentive. He is allowed now to be in control or in charge of things that I didn't let him do. Um, Our daughter came home from school the other day and she was telling us all about this altercation with this friend of hers. And he's just stepped right in with fatherly wisdom. And I just kept my mouth closed and I was just like, yeah, this is great. So he's stepping up, being, you know, a father again without me going, well, you know, um, this, that, and that, and not letting him have a word. He just took control and charge. And it was just so great. And I'm so grateful. And I thought, oh, yay. Definitely yay. And I love how you call it fatherly wisdom. It sounds so respectful and that just came out of your mouth. It doesn't sound like you are uh, having to fake it till you make it. It sounds like this is really how you see his 
contributions to your daughter's altercation at school. Yeah. And, you know, I knew this was working, um, Laura, because uh, when I'd finish work, I would kind of just have that dreaded feeling in my stomach about, you know, having to return home and facing the consequences of my controlling reactions and um, actions or reactions to things. And that's just gone. I can just return home knowing that he's got our best interests at heart and there is nothing simmering there, like no disrespect. It's just so good and it's just peaceful. And because I have relinquished control and I'm just being so grateful the fact that if things aren't done the way I would want them to do be done, that I probably just haven't really expressed my desire properly or at all. And then I can just take a moment to check myself and go, okay, I'm not really happy about there being so many dishes on the counter when I come home from work. How can I put that in a way that is respectful? And how can I bring that across? And it's okay. The world's not going to end if my desire doesn't get met straight away or that week. But as long as I just express them in a respectful manner, that's not nagging, that just is free of any control, then I've done my part. So I would love to hear, how did you express your desire about the dishes on the counter? <laughs> so I just said, oh, I would just love to come home to a, a clean kitchen. And I left it quite general. And um, slowly but surely, things are being moved from the counter into the dishwasher and I've let go of that controlling need for everything to be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so it is still a work in progress, but it's fine. It's good. I don't want to create a controlling environment where he feels disrespected. And I think, I go, okay, what's more important? These dishes or my intimacy? And at the moment, I'm choosing intimacy as I'm just building him up more. And I will express another desire, you know, when the moment's right and go, hey, you know, I'd love to come home to a clean and tidy kitchen when I come home from work. And, yeah, keep going and expressing that desire. I love it. And um, yeah. so I was going to ask, too, if you ever felt... Um, like you were a mute or like you didn't get to express your opinion or your thoughts on things like, I mean, your daughter's altercation at school or the way the money's spent and things like that, right? Now, what about your thoughts on that? Well, I'm really glad you brought that up, Laura, because just the other day, the school dental van is at school. So the, con um, the slips came home with um, the dentist's opinion of what needs to happen to the children's teeth. And um, I was able to express just my opinion about certain things, but I said it in a way that, hey, you know, look, I'm, I'm really happy for this to go ahead, but I'm just really not sure about this treatment. And you know, what do you think? I just really want to know, you know, what your opinion is on this. And he went away that night and he did all this research and he came back to me in the morning and he said, I agree with your opinion on this, but I think we should do this. And I said, you know, you've got the children's best interests at heart here too. And I'm happy with that so I knew that he he's the father of my kids of course he's going to want the best for them and if he went away and did all this research and he's come back to say hey I think this then I'm happy with that so did you feel scared that if it wasn't if you didn't choose the treatment that you thought was best that they 
that your kids might suffer in some way. Yes, I did. I did feel scared. Um, but I knew that I just had to trust him. And actually, Laura, his opinion of the, or the answer that he came back with was the same thing that I wanted. So really there was it was all a win a win all around um and because i was able to express my desire about the treatments and he went away with an open mind and researched it and came back with the same opinion i it was a win win i guess for everyone if he came back with another opinion i would have just respectfully have to go while well, you are their father and I know that you want the best for them too um and then I think that coming to him with that humility and vulnerability that if he did have any doubts that he would have gone back to the research and possibly changed his mind as well wow but um, Whereas this would have been a very tense situation in the past and I might have even, like, not given him the consent forms. I, I just was like, no, if I'm going to be a respectful wife, this needs to be out in the open. Here is it. And he was, he just took charge and it was great. It's, that sounds amazing and I love hearing your your faith that had there been any distance between your opinion and his on how what best to do, he would have taken that very seriously and considered further to and but it and the, and that it's so important to you to show up with that trust and vulnerability um, because this this is where your power is. This feels like you feel so much more empowered. Yeah. Um, when my husband asked my father to for my hand in marriage, my father even said, are you sure about this? She's very controlling. <laughs> so, <laughs> Dad. And this was 14 years ago. So <laughs> he knew what he was getting in for, but I was, you know, just, oh. And now I look back, I go, oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> how could I how could he have stayed on for this long? Like, you know, I'm so grateful that he stayed on for this long. <laughs> you know, maybe, yeah, other people might have just gunned it, but hey, he hung in there. So he had some faith that is, you know, things would get better. But um, yeah. So now that he has got this new wife who is just res more respectful and, you know, we're all human beings. So, you know, I am working on this all the time and I'm reading my notes and I'm just soaking it all in. Um, even the other day we were out um, watching my son play cricket and um, he was doing the scoring and I interrupted him. He was saying something and I interrupted him and I just I was like, Oh, I'm, I apologize. That was just really disrespectful of me to interrupt you. And I said it like that. And he goes, oh, oh, that's okay. Oh. And, <laughs> and immediately the mood just changed. And we were able to keep going and having a, a really good conversation after that. So just little things like that, catching myself, going, oh, I'm really sorry. And him just going, oh, that's okay, honey. Just and the next conversation just flowed again. Now, are you are you ever worried that when you say I apologize for being disrespectful, someone will hear you and think, oh my gosh, what? Like, why would she say such a thing to him? Like, does it? No, I know. I'm actually thinking of apologizing a bit more louder next time because then I could maybe catch the attention of some people and go, ah, oh, this is interesting because 
today's society, you know, the woman has to be on top and, you know, she needs to make sure she's heard. But whereas with this approach, I'm just honouring my husband, showing him respect that I made a mistake and I'm owning up for it. I was really rude to interrupt him. And um, and he feels really good, I think, hearing his wife just respecting him. Sorry, respecting him. And if everyone can hear that, and if someone comes back to me maybe and goes, hey, you know, I heard you apologize, and I can have a conversation with that wife or girlfriend about this, then that's so good. I love this. Uh, you, it sounds like you are like a spark plug yourself, right? You're just kind of a live wire kind of girl. And yeah. um, so I'm wondering, has anyone in your in the rest of your world noticed this a big dramatic change in Julia? Yeah. So I'm practicing the skills on like, like with my friends and my family. And I'm just really honoring them and I feel myself or I hear myself saying you know like oh, I'm just so grateful that we get to spend this time together and you know I really hear that you are having these issues and just really being present in the moment with all my friends and family and um yeah everyone because I feel so much lighter this load has been taken off my shoulders of controlling everything I can just have more fun so my friends are like hey you want to come out for a coffee and I'm like yeah yeah and then I'll just tell my husband I'd love to go out for a coffee with xyz and he's like yeah go for it so it's just all around feels really light and more fun and yeah I took up beach volleyball which is something I've done in the past and I was like no I'm going to make it happen and we will work it out with the kids and a schedule. And a big thing as well, Laura, with my mindset is that because I'm practicing taking care of myself and I've realized that when my husband is doing something for himself, it's not selfish. It's not him being selfish. It's him actually taking that time out for him. Whereas in the past, I would have been like, oh, look at him. He's just sitting on his phone or he's just pushing his agenda. I am like, no, he needs time out too. He needs to go and have some time with his mates. Um, he's not, And he's not doing it to avoid me or be out the house. He's now genuinely going out with his mates and he is like, just so, it's just so good, Laura. So this is the same guy that was depressed and cranky that we heard about? The same man? Yeah. 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 And whereas he would snap at the kids, he's now going, oh, I am feeling really wound up. I need to just go and take a break. So he's realizing that he he also needs to, you know, work on his things. And he's coming to the party. His his man cave slash office is a bit of a mess. And he said to me the other day, I go, oh, I think I really need to tidy this up. You know, it's um, it, it looks a bit like a, a boy's bedroom <laughs> without, without me having to say anything because he's realizing these things by himself and that he needs to take ownership of his side of the street or he needs to be on his paper and I stopped being helpful he he was hinting at me last night can you make these spring rolls and it was 10 o'clock in the evening and I said I can't I'm tired I'm going to bed you know what about honoring spring rolls <laughs> how did that go how did he respond to that yeah well he made them himself and oh. He ate them all, so they must have been good. And <laughs> no, no harm done, no love lost. Amazing. So now, how do you know when 
the line to where is the line to be helpful or not be helpful? How do you know? Um, I am figuring out as I use these skills that if it if what needs to be addressed is on his paper, like for example, these spring rolls that was entirely for his consumption and enjoyment. And it had nothing to do with me. It wasn't on my paper. And I was tired. I honored myself and I just said, I can't. I'm tired. And he could have made that own his decision to not cook the spring rolls. But he did. If it's on his paper, for example, our coffee machine needs to be fixed. It's been broken for a probably a month now. Um, warranty. So it's it's nothing I can help with. And he knows this. Uh, you know, it's on his paper. I It's out of my control. And so anything that he is, you know, his action, he needs to do, or it's for himself, that's him. I don't need to be helpful. I don't need to be helpful and tidy up his office. I don't need to be helpful and remind him to tidy up his clothes because it's nothing. It's out of my control. Unless he really asks me to do something directly and I am not compromising myself, then that's okay. You know, I can still be a wife. And if he asks me to iron his shirt because he's going to run late, you know, that's fine. Unless I'm, of course, you know, heading out the door. Then, yeah, no, I can't. I need to be out of here. <laughs> I, I love this. It's a, it sounds so uh, clear and freeing. And it doesn't sound like it's yeah. hurting your marriage that you didn't want to make this. You didn't, you didn't make the spring rolls. You just didn't agree to it. And that, and nothing was lost. And you iron the shirt if you, if you can, if you have time, if you can help and it's not going to cost you, you'll do it. You can't fix the coffee machine because it's under warranty. That's his, that's his deal. So, there's you have a lot of clarity, which I just mm. find amazing, really, because I think, I think it can get murky sometimes about uh, being a helpmate, uh, wanting to be supportive of your husband by helping him in a way that might be a sacrifice sometimes. Like that's part of being a good wife, but not uh, not from what you're describing. Yeah, um, and it has taken some. Um, time to get used to and it's also part of me that I need to acknowledge that he is also on this journey with me being more respectful and you know showing up as a fun wife and a loving wife and kind of almost like a carefree wife oh. that he will eventually join side by side. And as I, I don't want to bombard him with all these desires all at once because then I can also turn and go, okay, here's my list of desires and I don't want that to happen. So I'm drip feeding him desires as I go along and then he can come side by side. So it's a journey that we're both on. And, um, yeah, I need to acknowledge that he will take maybe a little bit of time to catch up. And that's okay. It's not a race. As long as we're keeping that intimacy and that fun. And the other day he even just said he was looking at some photos on his phone of a trip that we did a while ago. And he said, oh, we just really need to do more trips like this. So it was great, you know. Um, yeah. He wants to take you on trips, you and the kids, maybe. Yeah, trips. yeah, yeah. Instead of just hiding exactly. out in a man cave and being on his phone. <laughs> yeah, yes. What a difference. Yeah. And when he said, um, my mental health is improving, when he was watching the cricket game, which is his self-care, clearly, um, did you feel some pride about that? Like, you did this. Yeah. It's it's such a it was really a vulnerable moment for me because 
he's been kind of battling and I've seen him battle and struggle. And then if he's not feeling good about himself and then, you know, physical aches and pains, you know, he wasn't showing up as his best self. And whereas before I would just be like, oh, here we go again. Now hearing that his mental health is improving and I had took part in that. And you know what? Like the only thing that changed Laura was me and how I showed up. You know, I was like, the sky's the limit. I just keep acknowledging him and showing my gratitude and respecting him. It will just, his if his mental health, and he said, you know, that his mental health, if that improves, then everything else will just flow on. It was it was great. It was really I still get tears in my eyes when I hear that it was just such a big thing. It is a big thing. It's such a big thing, Julia, because that's an incredible accomplishment. You you were looking for information on how what how to deal with a depressed husband. And what happened instead is you changed, you became respectful and grateful. You put on a whole new pair of perspectacles. You changed you. You became your best self. And that has done more for your husband's mental health than you probably ever dreamed was possible. Totally. Just acknowledging him, saying, you're just such a good husband. You're such a good father. I'm so grateful for how you handled that situation or that you're working to support us. Like he just needed, he was craving that acknowledgement and I wasn't giving it to him for whatever reason. Maybe it wasn't in my mind or I was just, yeah, didn't think he deserved it. Um, To now just kind of almost dishing it out on a daily basis, you know, it's just been a game changer. It's been a game changer. Yeah. Yeah. And you're kind of glowing, as you say, <laughs> de- dealing it out on a de- daily basis. Like you just look very happy yourself. You look grateful. Um, as you're saying it, it really matches your energy. So this is, I mean, does this feel authentic for you to be so grateful or does it feel like you're kind of putting it on no because I really am because of my change in my mindset I am just so grateful I am so grateful that you know he he was working full-time and I was got to be with the kids full-time for probably a good 10 years And I'm just so grateful that he, you know, even though his work is really tough at the moment, that he is choosing to stick it out and support us. I'm just, I'm just so grateful that he, you know, is doing all that and he works from home and he's actually got both kids at home sick and I'm at work and I'm doing this interview and I'm just so grateful that, you know, for him, that he's got my best, my desires, um, that he just wants to please me and he knows what's best for our family as well. And, yeah, he's just so smart and clever. It sounds like you have an amazing, wonderful husband. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm thinking of this quote that – I forget who said it, unfortunately, but it, it's she said uh, most women um, spend so much time trying to make uh, have uh, make their husbands better that they they never become uh, good wives. I, I butchered that quote, but anyway, it's something along those lines. And you've done just yeah. the opposite. You've just become uh, a really wonderful wife, and this has made your husband uh, just soar and feel successful, making you happy, which is his main goal. It sounds like in life yeah you and the kids so it's just tremendous and can i get a sense of the timeline just for a wife who is maybe where you were with a depressed husband and cranky husband right and she wants to know 
How long is this going to take, you know, for him to feel better? I'm just curious what your timeline was. Yeah. So I started practicing these skills just under four weeks. Four weeks ago? Yes, four weeks ago. Not even that. Wow. So you found that article and joined the pro. It was only four weeks ago. Unbelievable. Correct. Yeah. Unbelievable. And you just took to them. There was no hesitation. No, no, there was no hesitation. And even though it felt a little bit awkward to start with, I just pushed through. And we've been married for coming up 13 years. So, <laughs> and, you know, him being depressed and just having all these mental issues, you know, it's just disappearing. So anyone with, you know, a depressed husband, you can do these skills, practice these skills, even just starting somewhere where I started with just telling him that how grateful I was. And you can start with little things. Um, you know, I just am so grateful for you picking up the kids from school. It helps me so much. Anything and just watching them, you know, um, their mood change. So, you know, I am I feel like I'm also his biggest supporter. And he knows that now because I tell him that I'm so grateful and yeah, I listened to him. He always used to say to me, oh, I just, you don't support me. You just, your emotional support is just not there. That's not you. Now he says, thank you. Thank you for listening because I'm telling him I'm hearing him. Does it feel like you have superpowers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you're a good listener now, you're respectful now, you're grateful now. I hear more joy. Yeah. Incredible. This, I mean, you must feel like a million bucks. Yes, totally. Yeah. Totally. And, uh, okay, so, and your, and your best tip, your best tip for someone who is where you were thinking, if he would just join, if he would just do, as I say, and he, and he's spending all his time in his man cave and on his phone and he's depressed uh, and she wants what you have now where he wants to share with her and take her on trips. And it feels um, if, if she, you know, you feel so grateful for all the, I mean, he's taking care of the kids while they're sick at home while you're here having this interview. What's your best tip for her? What would you suggest? She, where, how should she start? Um, the the first thing that I did was I just listened. I listened very intently to what he was saying. And, and then I would just show that I cared and I hear you. I hear how frustrating that is, followed by a gratitude, even if it didn't relate to his work, I would just be able to say, I'm just so grateful that you are such a good husband. And he is a good husband. And first, you know, for the last probably 10 years, I didn't really think he was a good husband. But just me saying that and speaking that aloud over him, you know, he is a good husband. So I would just start with a small thing like saying I hear you and that is really frustrating or that is really exciting yeah so it felt like a stretch to say this at first you're such a great yes. husband but now it's absolutely true yeah yeah it is true he is such a great husband and yeah I hear it, it. Is, it is it is yeah yeah what uh, what do you think you would say to yourself? What would you say to Julia if you could go back in time 
and tell her what you know now. I would say that, um, you know, your marriage can be amazing. Your marriage can be everything it, you want it to be. Um, and it starts with you. You know, yeah, that's that you can have it all. You can have it all. And it starts with you. And that your husband, you know, is not a mind reader, but being respectful and just acknowledging your desires, you can have it all. And the best thing is that you can have it all and still have the peace and joy and intimacy with your husband rather than that just plowing on ahead doing what you want to do and him being the decision you've essentially made hmm. beautiful outstanding so um what about your kids how has this impacted your kids um they now definitely know that we're on the same page um it's been quite um an interesting time with my kids and their friends like just the other week um, my daughter said that one of her good friends their parents split and I was just able to really have a conversation about you know how me and dad you know um, my husband are on the same page and she just felt really secure. Both kids feel really secure knowing that we are not arguing. We're not having, a, you know, issues. They don't see me, you know, storming off or not talking to um, their dad. It's just been so settled and peaceful. And they are just really relishing the safety that it's created must feel so good as a mom to be able to give that to them yeah and then I do think Laura I go oh if only that, that mom had the skills that I have now then maybe she could have saved her relationship and you know then her kids would be feeling safe and secure and yeah yeah your heart's breaking for that for your daughter's friends parents yeah well yeah. yeah the kids suffer so much yeah yeah well um julia it sounds like you're a future coach because <laughs> that is what motivates coaches we can't stand it when um we see someone suffering unnecessarily because just because they don't know, just because no one ever taught them the skills. Yeah. And uh, and you have such a remarkable transformation in your family. So, uh, so yeah, so incredible. So worth celebrating that you have something that you want to scream from the rooftops probably about as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I think that's, I think that's very inspiring. Your story is very inspiring. inspiring. In mm -hmm. fact, I do want to, I do want to give you the wife award, the best wife award. Here it is. Thank you. You've been, yeah, you've done a remarkable job, right? The the most important thing you could possibly do in the world, I think, is is to create a strong family, a loving family. And you've done a wonderful job with that. So congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you so much for sharing um, all these these amazing stories. You had wonderful stories, specific stories of how you've transformed your marriage. Um, I think that everyone can relate to. Uh, so what a gift and what a, uh, an important way to end world divorce. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Something big is happening here on the Laura Doyle campus and you are invited. Hundreds of women have become experts on the six intimacy skills and transformed their marriages by becoming certified Laura Doyle relationship coaches who live their purpose, have more intimacy, and earn for their families. 
In my free masterclass, Purpose, Prosperity, and Intimacy, How to Have All Three and Help Others Do the Same, I share directly from our popular relationship coach training and certification course about the number one most important qualification for becoming a successful relationship coach. I also reveal the indispensable first step to having a passionate, peaceful relationship and how to share it with other women. I explain about why our coaches have an unfair advantage over other relationship coaches and counselors. And I go step by step through our proven coaching curriculum and why it's so effective in saving marriages and empowering coaches. Register today for Purpose, Prosperity, and Intimacy. Have all three and help others do the same at lauradoyle.org slash purpose. That's lauradoyle.org slash purpose. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week's topic is my husband doesn't respect me. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that this podcast has been downloaded over 3.7 million times, not even including YouTube views. And the only explanation for this growth is that you have been sharing it with other women. And I am so grateful for your enthusiasm and for you giving everyone you know hope that her marriage can last and thrive too by sharing the podcast. I feel your support and your love. And I just wanted to tell you that I love you too.